Previously on Newswire LA, the CHIPS 35-year cast reunion coming to you from the Airport Hilton in Los Angeles, California. Oh, it's been amazing. I've been a fan for 35 years. I was seven when the show started. I grew up with these guys. It's like meeting old friends again. And the fans are just so excited. It's like a dream. It's like their bucket list for them. They just love it. And it was an incredible opportunity to be on a television show which espoused solving problems with your head and your heart and not with guns and violence. All right, we have it at 600, right? $600. Walk it up to Take center, Paloma. And yet to come back after all these years and see these cast members, you know, who have gone through all different things in their lives, it's, uh, it's an exciting time. Last time, we took you inside of the CHIPS 35-year cast reunion and showed you a day of fun and fan interaction. What we didn't get a chance to do was to speak to everyone who appeared on that stage. Well, tonight, we make good on our promise and bring you interviews with the cast members in attendance today. All of this and more on Newswire LA, coming up right after this. After a long but satisfying day of reminiscing about everything chips, participating in Q&As, moderating auctions and raffles, the cast have retired to the adjoining autograph room. Here they'll sign an array of items such as photographs, event cards, and personal pieces of memorabilia brought by the fans themselves. What makes these autograph sessions so popular is the simple fact that the fans can get up close and personal with their favorite actors. After all, these people played the characters that they have come to know and love. While the fans stayed in the main auditorium for a few more features, Newswire LA sneaked into the autograph room and got its own one-on-one -on -one with the cast, and we're happy to bring it to you right now. Please note that some of our conversations transcended the usual Hollywood chat and went into some personal areas of the cast members' lives. In particular, I want to point out our conversation with Paul Link and Bruce Penhall. Enjoy, everyone, and we'll see you right after. Chen Thomas Sanksy, Newswire LA. I am here with Lou Saunders of Chips. I've got you in the autograph room, so i got to be quick. These fans are going to come here really absolutely, fast. Absolutely, absolutely. Talk to me about what it's like uh, seeing everybody from the show again. It is an incredible blessing to have worked on the show in the first place. It's even more so a blessing to come here and see people that you haven't seen. Most of these people I haven't seen in those 35 years. To renew those acquaintances, to renew that camaraderie is exceptional. And I'll never forget this day as long as I live. What have you been doing in the time since actually, Chips? Actually, I've uh, written, I, I write poetry. I have a couple of books, well, one book that was published. I got another one that's coming out soon. I've also been producing some plays that I wrote. And I have a line of uh, products based on an inscription that I wrote, which is one of the t-shirts that I'm wearing right now. And uh, we're trying to bring God back to the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, but if we can't do that, we have our own pledge. Fantastic. Are you doing any acting work as of these days? Uh, no, I recently moved to Georgia and uh, trying to find out what the scene is out there. But I really enjoy writing now. I, I really enjoy writing the scripts and, and writing the plays, and writing the books. Um, I still do voiceovers, so I'm very blessed to do that. 
but being in front of the camera, if, if it rolls back again, maybe I'll do it, but at, at the meantime, I'm really enjoying writing. With those voiceovers, where can we hear you? What products? Oh, they're all over the place, uh, especially down in the southeast. Uh, done some for um, Aunt Jemima, s and vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. The thing people have to remember about voiceovers is that we change our voices for various products depending upon what they're looking for. And a good voiceover talent has range, and I'm a second base all the way up to falsetto. So I can give you the full range, and when people are looking for this voice that they're hearing now, it's quite often something entirely different. Yep. Wow. Well, do you see yourself doing any more of these reunion shows, getting back with these guys? What's the feeling? I really hope what they do. I mean, there's been such a feeling of kinship uh, after all these years between us that I really feel if an opportunity came up that we were able to do this, I think everybody would jump on it. I think that the, the, per, the pervasive thing that was all through this is that we realize this may be the last opportunity for all of us to see each other. We never know what God has intended for us. So to jump on this opportunity and, and, and embrace it, I think was paramount to each and every one of us. You know, one of the more interesting things I was thinking about a little bit earlier, I think during the lunch hour, was that most of this cast, and I can't think of anybody, everybody is still alive. A lot of series you see, there are two, three, four, five people who've passed on, but this cast is lucky enough to say everyone is still alive and well. I was talking to that about my, my son is here today, my youngest, my youngest son, he's 31, and I was telling him, I feel so blessed because everybody's here, with the exception, of course, of Eric, but everybody's here, everybody looks great, they look healthy, like, and they look happy. And in Hollywood, that's a heck of a lot to say. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, we'll let you get back to it. We won't take up too much time here. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It's good to meet you. I remember you on the series, and wow. <laughs> so many years ago. You know what, between you and I, it makes me know, and I don't mean this in a bad way, I was younger then. Yes, yes. <laughs> weren't we all? I was younger, thinner. I'm still looking for your fro. <laughs> but it's not there. What does it mean to you guys to see that there's so much, so much love for you guys here, even after 35 years? It's really touching, isn't it, Michael? Yeah, definitely. It honestly is touching, and, it, and people they said such heartfelt, sincere things. It, it really was. I was very surprised. I mean, I appreciated the experience and felt very lucky to have been on the show and moved on with my life and everything. And I, and some of the people were so sincere. And I was, yeah, you can't help but be touched and really grateful. And you flew in all the way across the pond. You know what? And I had said something to Michael about this, but um, when Sue asked, you know, sent out the email, I thought, oh, be so, you know, be difficult and this and that. And uh, but then as the time got closer. And it rained and rained and rained in England. <laughs> and I thought, Southern California. Um, if anything, she's practical. Yes. And so, no. <laughs> so we just, I thought, oh, it's good. We'll do a combination, spend a few days, see my sister, and do some stuff. And so I was thrilled and, and very honored to have been asked, actually. Michael Dorn, you've been part of a couple of different franchises. You're best known as Lieutenant Commander Worf on Star Trek, of course, and I'm sure that one comes up all the time. Being that you're a part of that franchise, you go to a lot of conventions. What's the difference between those guys, the Trekkies, and the folks that are here today? Uh, there really isn't a difference. I mean, you know, it, depending on what convention you go to, there's, you know, they have costume contests and things like that. But in terms of the individuals, it's, it's pretty much the same. It's just people coming. Uh, because they really enjoy the show. There's something that touched them and something special to them. They grew up with it. Uh, uh, people come to, uh, to this convention and to the Star Trek conventions whose parents, you know, made them watch the show. You know, you sit down and watch this show with me because this is a great show. And uh, so there's really not that, that, not that difference. You know, it's not a huge difference, except for the costumes. We're here at the CHIPS convention today, and so are you. Paul Link, Grossman, and Bruce Penhall, world famous racer, came in those later seasons. How do you guys feel about uh, the love from the audiences after 35 years? Well, I mean, it's so special to be with everyone, to get a chance to be with Bruce and, and Lou and 
Pine and Brody and Michael Dorn and Lou Saunders and um, I'm, I'm having a, and Larry and of course our uh, beloved Brienne Leary. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It's sort of like when you say 35 years, I should be looking at that, but I'm looking no, at you. I'm just giving you, well, you know, but when I'm, when, 35 years, uh, you know, he was a kid. He's still a kid, but I, you, the impact of it, it's, I wouldn't want to go to my 35th high school reunion. I would have no interest in that. Yeah, Quite I, candidly, I uh, this is very special. It's an opportunity for us to reconnect, to touch, to talk, to, to be friends. You know, just because life goes on. It's, it, things don't, don't stop for anything. What have you guys been doing in the 35 years since we last saw you? Uh, I, I don't know, I've been trying to make a living. You know, uh, I've been doing uh, doing acting, uh, getting some jobs, doing some directing. Um, I wrote a one-man show when my first wife died, and, and uh, that got me in a whole one-world, one-man, uh, one-man solo theater world, so to speak. And I've kind of gotten back into acting now. I've kind of been doing a lot of theater. Um, I raised four children, um, remarried for 21 years to the beautiful and talented Christine Healy. Still live in the same house I lived in when I was doing chips. Uh, you know, really trying to uh, just keep developing as a human being. You know, I'm, I'm thrilled to death to be here. I really am. It's uh, like Paul was saying, it's, you know, these guys really kind of uh, nurtured me along the way. I was just so out of my realm when I when I became a, an actor when I got on the show the first day I saw the set was the first day I, I I ever saw a set period and these guys were so good to me and and they knew that you know I was very inexperienced and they helped me along the way and you know what we spent day and night together on the set and uh, for me to come back and see these guys now and you know, of course I didn't get to see a lot of them but I did with Paul, I did with Lou, Robert. I didn't get to spend a lot of time with Larry, I did with Eric. And uh, you know what, these guys mean a lot to me and they've been very, very good to me. So it's nice and you know, I, I, then I look out in the audience and see these, the fans that come from all over the world that, you know, that touches me and you know, I, I am happy to be a part of this and I, I love where the money's going to, the charities and uh, the people give their time and, and these actors give their time. I, I am thrilled to death. And it is, it is a real nice thing, and I know it was noted at the top of the uh, program that you're coming out here. It's nice to see you out here after a very challenging year. How has it lifted you up after such a challenging year? Well, you know, uh, after my son's accident, um, Paul, Robert Pine, all these guys, Larry Wilcox, they all reached out to myself and my family and you know, uh, it was so heartfelt for us and you know, there was a big part of me that did not want to come here. And th there's a big part of me that, and my wife and my family, that we don't really want to be doing any sort of celebrating of any kind. We feel it's not fair. That's just an emotion that we're dealing with because of Connor's death and you know we're, we're reaching out and we're trying to you know pull ourselves together and it's very difficult um, but uh, I'm so pleased that that we're here and, and get to spend the time with these guys and and these fans that put me and a lot of these other guys on the board it, it means a lot to me and you know we just have to keep on pushing forward I just have to say that this is one classy guy and uh, I, I feel very honored to have the opportunity to be with him today because I've really, he's been in my thoughts like on a daily basis because it's a tough thing. Two classy guys I got a chance to talk to today and I really mean that. Thank you for talking to us. I am here, I am here with Robert Pine and Lou Wagner, both from CHIPS. Both of you, though, have a unique connection, and your son, to that world-famous Star Trek franchise. You appeared in an episode of Voyager, you were one of the earliest Ferengi, and your son is helming a reboot of the entire franchise. I don't know if you thought about it, but what's it like being part of two great franchises? You've got Chips, and you've got the Star Trek franchise. Well, for me, uh 
chips will always be first. Uh, the guys were great and are great, and the stories are super. And uh, it was just, you know, one of the greatest shows that I could have been a part of, really. So. Well, um, yeah, I've never thought of it as being part of two franchises. I did actually two episodes of uh, Star Trek. I did one, uh, the last iteration on television, and then I did the earlier one. I I get them all. <laughs> and um, as far as my son, um, I couldn't be more thrilled that he's having a success during that. He tells me that new one which is coming out next may i believe is absolutely super that i think uh, all the fans will really enjoy it so uh, um no i'm listen i'm i'm glad to be as i know lou would say the same thing i'm glad to be associated with anything yeah, that's a yeah. success even the non-successes if they pay me <laughs> yeah. and what are you guys doing today what do you get what project can we see you in uh, I'm on a show called Raising Hope, and I play the family uh, uh, lawyer. It's a funny show. I heard you. Yeah, I yeah. can't wait to see yeah. it. It's television. Yeah. Uh, I am actually at the moment doing a play called uh, Lady Patriot, <clears throat> which is at the Hudson Theater through October 14th. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, written by Ted Lange, who you may remember from uh, Love Isaac. Boat. Isaac, very good. Yeah. And uh, we're having a lot of fun doing that. And um, I think I have an episode of Private Practice coming up that uh, will be on. And, uh, you know, I, I, I keep busy. What does it mean to you guys to come out here and see? With the Star Trek franchise, it's built in. You have, a, you have a convention, and, and the lines will be wrapped around the... What does it mean to you to come out to this particular event and find that so many people are still touched by the show, in love with the show, 35 years after it first premiered on NBC? Well, that's why it touches my heart, because it was great for me, of course. You know, it was my meal ticket and uh, great parts and everything, but... To have people care and and some people change their lives because of our show, you know. Some people found a career, and uh, it's very touching. Very touching. No, it, it's very gratifying. I think to any actor who finds people who appreciate what they do, and our show, which we, you know we were all <laughs> a lot younger then, and it was a big thing in our lives then. Uh, that for a lot of us, our first really big success. And um, um, to find people who shared the joy of that and uh, whatever, it's, uh, it's extremely gratifying, to be sure. You know, one piece of trivia that I read somewhere, and you can confirm if it's true or not, when you first got the part, you didn't realize, or maybe, maybe you found out later, that it was a motorcycle sergeant. Do you ride motorcycles, or did you have an aversion to those two-wheel beasts? I know somewhere on the internet it says that I, I asked them never to.